So we talk about business, we we discuss about ethics and morality. Ethics and morality have nothing to do with uh, what's right and wrong in business. Ethics and morality have everything to do with the subjective perspective of the individuals who are in positions of 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 influencing our culture, our behaviors, our beliefs, and our systems of understanding. What is necessarily unethical isn't necessarily illegal. So you have a, a president, a presidential candidate right now who's been convicted of tax fraud and he's running for president, right? So that has nothing to do with um, right and wrong, legal or illegal. It's just what it is. Is it ethical? Is it moral? No, right? Committing tax fraud is not just jump back into the group if you get if you get uh bumped off so tax fraud is illegal is considered unethical it's considered immoral but sometimes those things do or don't matter based upon circumstances so the question of justice or what's right or wrong is is not always relevant to the conversation in business, it pertains more so to what is legal and what is not legal. But for the sake of, of the chapter, ethics and morality are, are not often taking into consideration what is okay for a business to do, what is legal for a business to do, or what is illegal, is looking more at the concepts of moral uh, factors, is looking at concepts relating to uh, social factors, and ethical factors. So, for example, if if uh, if if we have a new presidential candidate who repeals EPA laws, which is Environmental Protection Act, which would allow for new businesses, where would allow for existing businesses to come into certain protected areas and drill for oil and and you know fracking and things of that sort, it would provide more jobs. Uh, provide more growth and revenue in those specific sectors, but also destroy environmental landscape, pollute and poison uh, certain areas. So is that morally or ethically good? If you're creating jobs, creating opportunities for, for more income, more employment, uh, more, more growth in a certain sector, but you're destroying the ecology of, a, of an environment. So if those laws are passed, it becomes legal. That legality has nothing to do with moral, morality, and ethics. So morality and ethics are its own standpoint in regards to what a group of people feel is right and wrong, and whether or not those things that we feel are right and wrong are, are justified. The higher point to the topic, though, is, is that ethics and morality are, are very, very, not just political, but they're culturally driven. So what you may think is right or wrong in your culture may not be the same perception in another culture. In one culture, if you're eating a dog in the, in America, if I uh, made dog stew, I'd be barbaric. I'd probably be put in prison. Uh, I You'd have animal rights activists against me. Um, I'd be on the news. Uh, <laughs> you know, eating at, oh, he's eating your pets, right? That That would be all over the news, right? <laughs> uh, you know, but if you're in Korea, certain parts of Korea, that may not be a problem, right? So then, so if I say, well, let me stick with the status quo, let me get a hamburger, I'll go to McDonald's or Shake Shack. I prefer Shake Shack personally. Go to Shake Shack, get a burger, get some French fries. I said, mm, you know, I'm having a good old fashioned American meal. And then I go, I travel, you know, thousands of miles to India into a, a Hindu territory. And I ask for a hamburger and, you know, could you kill that cow over there that you're worshiping? And I'd like to eat it. Uh, that would be crazy, right? Because and we'll get into the vegan thing in a bit, but that would be crazy because culturally they would see me as being barbaric for eating a cow. So a sacred creature. It's an animal that will hurt me. It's an animal that can plow my land. It's an animal that 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 
can fertilize my land. It gives milk. It gives sustenance. You know, it's got a gentle, gentle eyes and a gentle creature. It can be a beast of burden. Why would you want to murder and eat such an animal, right? Because literally, you can, you know, a, a living cow can sustain and provide for your family, your land, and you never have to kill the animal. And it's gentle. It's a gentle beast. So, uh, and that's the practical side of it. That's not the spiritual or religious aspect of it. So on one end, one practice is, is unethical and immoral from one country, but another country is burgers and french fries, right? But if you ate, if you ate old Timmy's doggy, oh, you're, a, you're, a, you're an animal. You're, oh, how, you're a terrible person. How could you eat little Timmy's dog? <laughs> <laughs> right but please pa pass the milkshake and the fries and i want a second burger you know so so it's it's all it's culturally relevant to ethics and morality is very much tied to culture society perception views very heavily okay so the, these things uh, let me just i think i have some participants waiting uh no i don't okay good so these things are very much tied to uh, society, right? So likewise, uh, uh, vegan, you know, if you don't eat animals, this, you know, rightfully so, or little creatures, you know, I'd feel terrible having to kill and murder another creature. But then you look at society, you know, but you look at nature, right? N animals kill and eat each other all the time. In fact, if animals don't kill and eat each other, you have a, a the, the the whole ecology of the world throws out of balance. If you see a cute little deer prancing around and it's just eating grass, like, oh, what a sweet little deer. Don't kill it. It's innocent, right? And it just runs, scurries off into the wilderness. But if the cougar, the if the cougar or or, or the mountain lion, the wolf doesn't eat those animals, they multiply rapidly. And if they multiply rapidly, they destroy all the grasslands. And it totally throws off the ecology. And you would totally destroy the ecology of, of an environment, which would then inadvertently ruin and destroy the environment and lives of other creatures and other animals, uh, both sentient and unsentient, vegetation, bacteria, everything, because one animal was left unchecked. So is it cruel or is it nature? So there's there's a wisdom there's a higher intelligence to understanding morality, the truth of morality and ethics. So we can make our personal choices. We can decide what we feel is not, what we are comfortable and not comfortable doing. But when you have a higher in intellectual understanding of a, of a situation, a higher in intelligence of a, a circumstance and situation, you can gain more clarity on the ethics and the morality of a situation. So in this situation, when we look at business, businesses are making decisions. They make decisions that I think are, are right and wrong. They may not have the, the higher understanding of how their decisions impact others. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, right? So one of the things to take into consideration is whether or not you feel something is right or wrong. So I, get, I don't remember if I said this in the class last time, might've been a different class, I was mentioning about in our food system, pesticides, herbicides, chemicals are put into our, our food system because it's, it's a cheap and effective way of growing produce, vegetables and fruits. Even the meats we eat, the animals are fed, they're given antibiotics, they're given um, corn, grains, things that they normally wouldn't eat in nature because it fattens them up and it's cheap. These things have uh, uh, a negative impact, right? So you're eating those pesticides, you're eating those herbicides, and they have a negative impact on your health and well-being, a severely severe negative impact on your health and well-being. They also negatively impact the wildlife. So uh, herbicides uh, impact uh, insect life. They destroy the immune systems of, of local insects like bees and honeybees and things of that sort. Uh, in fact, that's why we had maybe a decade or two ago, uh, uh, and maybe still now, a decline in the bee population is because of insect, uh, not insecticides, but herbicides were impacting their immune system. So these things that, that we do business-wise that we think are good, 
They think they're cheap. It's cost cutting. Sometimes it's not good, cheaper cost cutting. It causes problems. So now a dilemma that we thought was good now creates a dilemma of, of ethics and morality. So a lot of times the concept of morality and ethics is really more so related to what we understand. So if you do understand that the thing you're putting in your food is is making a population sick and unhealthy and it's killing, you know, it's killing a, a, a critical wildlife, then you can understand, oh, this is not really a good thing. This is maybe this is should maybe uh maybe we need to think that this could be there's a moral consequence to how it's affecting society. But if you don't realize that, then you think it's okay. So that's why I use the the purview of nature. If you're just a caveman running around in, in nature and you see the sun and the moon, the animals, you think, oh, big bear, run. It's gonna scary, gonna eat me. And you look at you look at the the water and, and you make up these uh myths and ideas about nature to sort of create a sense of comfort and understanding about the environment. But when you understand nature, the science of nature, the higher understanding of what's going on, you start to see the wisdom, the logic, the the balance and the ecology of our world around us. And that it's is both fragile, but also uh uh very, very complicated and sophisticated. So much so that I use the animal, you know, the 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 example of animals killing and eating each other. It's a very vicious world we live in. Bacteria wants to kill you, viruses want to destroy you, fungus wants to grow on you and, and devour you, animals want to eat each other. It's it's crazy, violent, destructive chaos out there. Your body's in the, the the very your skin is at constant battle with with foreign invaders and things coming in contact with you. Where if your immune system fails, you will be killed and eaten and destroyed by some form of bacteria, viral material or fungal material if your body stops fighting. Everything's trying to kill and fight each other. But there's a balance to it. There's a wisdom to it. There, there's an ecology to it. And that, and if you have the the knowledge and science to to see that, which we do in today's world, we have the knowledge and science to understand that, you can understand perhaps is it ethical or immoral for animals to kill each other? Right? So is 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 death and killing moral or ethical? So then there's a framework, right? Well, if, if a wolf eats a, a deer, it's it's fine because that's nature. So is that kill, is that a righteous kill? Is that a good kill? Is that a bad kill? That deer is suffering, it's got teeth in its throat, it's bleeding out, it's, it's, it's in pain. But if that doesn't happen, then what happens to nature? What happens to, to the world? What happens to the ecology? Every person sitting in this room was born from their mother from their mother's womb. And it was a very excruciating, painful process for your mother to either push you out carry or give birth to you so the nature of suffering is is synonymous with us physically sitting here being here and being present at this time it required us to suffer so then we look at the idea of suffering and morality and ethics and i'm not trying to get philosophical even though i am but it's to tell you that the concept of ethics and morality really only fully materializes with the intelligence required to understand the nature of the layers and levels and complications of the situation to determine if something is ethical or, or immoral. So culture and society might tell you something is ethical and immoral. Another culture and society might tell you it's not. You might feel bad about eating eating chicken or meat, but then, you know, if animals don't kill each other and eat each other, we don't have a unit, we don't have a world that's to sustain itself, right? But then is it cool or is it nice to have chickens in small coops walking all over each other, shitting all over each other? Pardon my French, but that's what they're doing. Uh, you know, pecking at each other and they've got festering blisters and their conditions are horrible. Is that better? Is that okay? Well, most people would think, no, even though you're eating the animal, that's just not cool. So there's this framework of ethics and morality and understanding. So in business, you will be tempted at times to do things because it's quick and easy or makes money or takes shortcuts, even though you're aware it may be unethical or immoral. Despite those concerns, you may be making decisions in business and not even realize 
what type of problem you're causing. So in the last class, I gave the example, um, not this class, but a different class about the agricultural system that uh, conventional farming uses. Um, they, they don't use manure like they used to back in the day. They use fertilizer. And fertilizer is a chemical compound they make in a, in a, in a factory, uh, nitrogen, you know, different, different uh, compounds. And they spray it all over the, all over the, the earth, the ground. And, you know, that's how they grow crops. So it's a man-made version of how you, you have mass agriculture. In the U.S., particularly the Midwest, where they do, where they, you know, they grow a lot of uh, crops and things of that sort, grains, America's grains, corn and wheat. Uh, all of that fertilizer, because they just spray so much of it, is, is, you know, plants give these things naturally to the soil, right? Plants give nitrogen to the soil. They give that mineralization. They, 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 they do these things naturally uh, through an ecology. When conventional farming does it, they, they do it artificially. So what happens is because there's no crop rotation and there's no natural biome, all of the uh, fertilizers actually begins to seep into the water supply in the ground. And the water supply becomes tainted with fertilizer. Then the water supply that's underground flushes out into the ocean and all the fertilizer flushes out to the ocean. And then the fertilizer changes the pH and the microbiome of the ocean. And then it causes uh, a change in the, uh, the, the ocean's microbiome which causes deadly algae blooms, which you may or may not have heard or read about. So if, if you look at the, 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 the coastlines and the oceans uh, to the, the south of, of the U.S., you have these deadly algae blooms that are blooming and you can't even swim in it and, it, and it's killing fish. And it's because of the fertilization of, of uh, big agriculture. So here's a thing where they're doing something that seems smart, seems fast, they understood the science of how plants grow. And they're like, hey, this is quick and easy and we could do this. And it seems as it, it seems ethical and moral to, to, to just feed America. And inadvertently, what they're doing is they're destroying the ocean. <laughs> right. So so now it, it, since we have the, the, the understanding of what's happening, is it ethical and moral to continue to to engage in uh practices where we do that in ancient mesopotamia and even in in, in uh, uh ancient south america they used uh, agricultural systems of um uh, uh irrigation where they would take a river and they would would have the river they would like cut lines from the river into their crops so the river would irrigate the crops and they've done that for thousands of years and it was like high tech back then uh and what happened is that the irrigation washed away or eroded the top soil and then when you don't have top soil you can't grow crops so after a, a couple of thousand years of, of awesome you know mesopotamian culture it just ended because the land became barren and unfertile because of the irrigation processes they used which they weren't aware of was or slowly eroding their topsoil over a thousand years. So if you go to those areas where you had teeming, you know, giant civilizations teeming with life and ancient culture, it's a barren wasteland in some of those areas. The tops of the soil still has never recovered. It's permanently barren because of what they did. So the things that they do sometimes, they're not aware of the, the consequences of, of what happened because they lack the knowledge, the intelligence, and the awareness of their decisions. So a lot of, so is it ethical or ethical? Well, at the time, it was cool. That's what you did. It was smart. But they destroyed their own civilization, literally, because of their agricultural process. So what it's telling you in that business is that business makes decisions. They follow rules and laws. They don't necessarily understand how those decisions are, are having a greater impact. And many times the ethics and the morality of our decisions that we do in business is shaped by our cultures, is shaped by our beliefs, is shaped by our foundation. In this country today, you've got 50% of the population that deeply feels the other population is wrong, evil, and wicked. 
You've got one half of America saying you guys are corrupt and wicked. And the other part feels, no, you're the bad guys. That's what's happening now. So well, who's right, who's wrong? And that's the thing with business is that when you read the chapter, it's not telling you what is the right thing to do in business or what is the wrong thing. It's not giving you morality. It's giving you definitions and framework to understand, I guess, the juxtaposition of what is ethics, the, the definition of ethics, the definition of morality, the definition or the concepts or the issues that arise from that. Right. And, and that's what you're being being tested on. That's what you're you know, you're, you're not you're not going to be tested on. Is this right or wrong? It's, you know, what what is what are some the dimensions of a company's social performance? Right. Philanthropy, social initiative. These are all called sociocultural. Right. Social initiatives are, are you know, what's the zeitgeist of today? Right. Uh, 60 years ago. The zeitgeist of, of 60 years ago would have been segregation was in, right? You segregated people by color, by skin color. The zeitgeist of today is, is you know, having a same-sex couple uh, share a kiss. And that's the social initiative. So it's relative to culture. It's relative to people's understandings. It's relative to 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 the world around us. But the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm using the, the, not the performative, but the pejorative of nature is because nature has nothing to do with your opinion. Nature has nothing to do with your beliefs. You know, topsoil eroding away for thousands of years has nothing to do with how you feel about somebody's gender or whatever. It's, it's the natural. It's the truth. It's what it is or what it isn't, right? So, you know, the nature of morality and ethics, it's about how we feel, if it benefits the society, if it benefits the people, if it benefits the group, if it furthers humanity, if it brings us peace, if it brings us love and compassion, because those things help develop and grow us. But a lot of determining what that really means is sort of the intellectual, the intelligence to see and understand the how this greater picture affects us all. So I, I leave you with that. So you kind of have some clarity that, you know, some philosophers will say there's no right and wrong. And that's just not true. <laughs> right. Because, you know, you may think this is the right thing to do. And then a thousand years later, you've destroyed your entire civilization. You've polluted your oceans. You've destroyed your ecology. You have no food. So who cares what the philosopher says? The truth of nature is the truth. So there's always an absolute to a situation. We just don't always have the, the understanding or wisdom or intelligence to really understand that. So a lot of times you kind of have to sort of do what you feel is right and just go with the flow and, and, and try to choose the higher road. But as far as businesses are concerned, a lot of businesses are very much aware of their decisions. They just don't care. They just want to make a money. They just want to make a buck. And uh, if it's legal, they'll do it. And I think what's important in business is, is you have to not think that way. You have to be responsible to, to how your decisions impact people and impact the society, regardless of whether or not is right or wrong. So I'm gonna stop sharing here um, and end the class. We're gonna meet again the same time uh, next week. The remaining of our classes will be online this format. Uh, if we do have an in, in live uh, in session class, I will remind you guys beforehand. So be well and take care everybody. Thank you, bye. Take care, Professor. We're going.